I would like to introduce our speaker, Dr. Hillary Clayton. Dr. Clayton was appointed as the first incumbent of the Mary Ann McPhail Equine Performance Center at Michigan State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Hillary Clayton. Now, the amount of damage to the tissues depends on the intensity and duration of the exercise. And if we were to go out and work the horse excessively hard, then we could cause a lot of damage and we could conceivably you know, have a, a clinically diagnosable injury. But the majority of our injuries don't happen that way. The majority of the injuries we see are due to repetitive strain. It's due to causing small amounts of damage and not allowing time for the regeneration to occur. So whether the tissues are able to repair and regenerate themselves depends on the frequency of exercise. So now we can see that it's important not to work the horse too hard too often if we want to avoid these repetitive strain injuries. Okay? So after a workout, we have to allow a certain amount of time for this repair to occur. How long do we have to allow? Well, we'll get into that in just a minute. So my third conditioning principle is the principle of rest and recovery. So this principle is based on the idea that we need time between intensive workouts in order for these tissues to repair themselves. And the way to avoid building up the damage in the tissues is to do different types of exercise on successive days. So don't go out into the same arena day after day and do exactly the same workout. I really believe that this is where these, um, the increase in dispensary injuries and bone tendons is coming from. Same exercise pattern, same arena day after day after day. So how long does it take for these um, tissues to recover after a workout? Usually 24 to 48 hours is enough. After a really hard work session, it might take three days. But the type of work that we're doing in training dressage horses is not the same amount of work as somebody who's preparing an event horse or an endurance racing horse. Those horses do a huge volume of work and they require longer periods between their workouts for recovery. But for our dressage horses, um, usually one to two days of a different type of work is what's required. So if you're going to do specific conditioning workouts, then two to three times a week is the appropriate frequency. Um, but that's not two or three days together, that's on alternating days. So we alternate a work day with a recovery day. Now I keep talking about recovery, what do I really mean by that? Essentially, I mean a different kind of work. We might do focus on trot work one day, canter work the next. Or you might do collected work one day and do a more relaxed sort of workout, round and deep the next. So different types of work on successive days is a good way to avoid repetitive strain injuries. Another thing you can do is give the horse an easy day. And an easy day might be turnout. It might be a trail ride, or it might be just uh, you know, an easy ride in the arena. What I don't want you to go away thinking is that when I talk about recovery or in quotes rest, I don't mean standing in a stall. Okay? I think this is something we should be working very hard to avoid if our goal is to produce an athletic horse. By the way, if anybody wants to ask questions, just, you know, shout off. Now, I've got something here in the red box. Anytime you see the red box, it means warning. So, the time when we get into trouble is when the amount of work exceeds the amount of recovery. So, either an excessive volume of work or 
inadequate recovery between the workouts, either of these can lead to overuse injuries. So pull suspensors, bowed tendons would be the major overuse injuries in our dressage horses. And as I've been saying, to avoid these overuse injuries, let's get out of the sandbox. Um, cross training is good. You can work on different surfaces, different terrains. And it's not only good for the horse's physiology, it's good for his psychology too. I'll, I'll repeat it, okay, just be brief. Okay, this is a horse that's in full training about five days a week. Different things every day. Yeah, that's fine, and especially if you're doing different things every day. I mean, I, I have no problem with a horse having a day off every week, but try not to make it a day that's standing in the stall. You know, if they can get turned out or you know, hack out in the country, that's as good a day off as, you know. No, I don't believe five days a week is too much. No. Anything else while we're doing questions? No? Okay. Well, let's go on and think about what are the actual physiological benefits of conditioning. And I've color-coded these. The blue ones are in the territory of cardiovascular conditioning. This is in the suppling or flexibility area. And the two in yellow are, are in the strength training area. So with cardiovascular conditioning, we're hoping to enhance energy production. And this is at the level of the muscle cells in the horse's body. There are different biochemical pathways that are used to produce energy, depending on whether the horse is doing aerobic or anaerobic type of exercise. But whatever um, type of exercise the horse is doing, we want to teach the muscles to produce energy by the appropriate metabolic pathway for the sport that the horse is competing in. Um, along with this, we need to improve the transport of oxygen from the air around us to the horse's muscles. And cardiovascular conditioning will also improve the horse's ability to lose heat that's generated during exercise. So it improves his thermoregulatory abilities. We want to make the horse's body more flexible. Suppleness is certainly a goal. And we're also going to try and strengthen the muscles and the other supporting structures. And, you know, there, there are some tissues that develop very early in life, and those would include the joint cartilage and also the elastic tendons, the, the superficial flexor tendon and the suspensory ligament. These attain their maximum strength actually very early in life. And with these ligaments and tendons, it's a little bit like the human Achilles tendon in that as you get older, exercise continues to actually degenerate those structures and they don't regenerate quite as well. And it's been calculated recently that when horses get to be over about 12 years old, some of these ligaments and tendons are about 30% weaker than in the young horse. So as the horses are getting, let's say, middle aged, um, obviously you want them to have them fit enough for the job that they're going to do, but you don't want to keep pounding away excessively more than you really need, need to, to to keep the level of fitness that you want. Does that, yeah. Yes, um, they would be, as far as we can tell, 
fully strengthened by about two years of age. And what's really important here is that, is that the type of exercise that, this, that our horses get when they're very small foals, weanlings, yearlings. Um, more and more we're learning that that has a significant effect on the horse's ability and longevity as an athlete. So, you know, I make a plea to turn out the babies too. Or if you're going out and, and buying horses as potential athletes, I would want to know what that horse or that foal did during the first few weeks of his life. Um, and, you know, the other part to this is that there are some tissues that even with the best conditioning program, we can't make them stronger because by the time we start working the horses, they've already, that window has already closed. Um, and what we have to be very careful of then is that we do allow these tissues to regenerate as much as they're capable of between the workouts. So I'm not saying they, they it's, you know, a total degeneration and um, downhill all the way, but certain of the tissues don't have such good regenerative capacity in the mature horse. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the question was, it relates to the size of some of these horses. You know, you've got a horse that's 18 hands, let's say. Is it proportionately as strong as a smaller horse? Okay, well, there are some basic biological principles here that it doesn't involve the extravagant movement. But as height increases, the mass of the animal increases in proportion to the height cued, whereas the strength of the supporting tissues increases in proportion to the height squared. Yeah, and that's a, you know, a basic sort of biological rule. And that uh, explains, at least in part, why it can be very difficult to keep a really big horse down. Done with questions for now? Oh, one more at the back. They did some research on this in the Netherlands. Um, and what they did was have some horses that were just in pasture, some that were in the stall all the time, and some that were partly in the stall but then they would take them out and run them over a yard and they would give them the same amount of running as the foals that were in the pasture. And the long and the short of it was that it seems like pasture exercise is the best because it's the way foals exercise themselves is that they'll sprint and then they'll stop and they'll walk around a bit and they'll graze and they'll lie down and then they'll have another little burst. And it seems that those short, quick, sprints are pretty much ideal for the musculoskeletal tissues in that development stage and that that is actually better than forced exercise. 